Hello everyone, welcome to VGS Astro. Today I'm going to be talking about something called as the Pancham Hapurush Yoga. And it is not just one yoga, it is a set of yogas termed as the Pancham Hapurush Yogas. And these yogas are not very rare. They are commonplace, it is fo they are found in many astrological charts. And I want to talk about the uniqueness of this yoga and I want to begin this video by posing a question. Have you ever noticed that in the many individuals that we encounter, some individuals seem to be significantly influenced by a particular planet so much so that the other planets get overshadowed? I'm sure you've come across many such people where there is this dominant planet in their chart that takes center stage while the other planets play a less prominent role. For instance, some people may be good in music. Some individuals excel in fine arts some in physically demanding sports like boxing or wrestling. And there are others who shine as educators, as teachers. Some even good in healing people, though they may not have a formal degree in medicine. They're good at it. They like to know about the diseases and how to treat them. They are more interested in the human anatomy and it's something that comes very naturally to them. Some people are so good at counselling. And some people exude a sense of sophistication throughout their dealings in life. And some others have this mass appeal when they enter a room, they are greeted by everyone and it's as if like they have a celebrity-like persona. And this phenomenon can often be attributed to the presence of a Panchamaha Purush Yoga in their chart. So what this yoga does is that it directs their focus towards a specific aspect of life. So making it a top priority while relegating all other pursuits to a secondary role. Now, it's possible that some people may have more than one Panchamaha Purush Yoga in their chart, but they may not be experiencing uh, impressive results from these yogas. And I will get to that in a bit. But speaking of the Panchamaha Purush Yoga, as you've guessed it, there are five in number. Rochaka, Malavya, Hamsa, Badra and Shasha Yoga. Strictly speaking, they're not like typical yogas. Now, you might wonder why I'm making this distinction after referring to them as yogas. Why am I contradicting? And the reason is that these yogas are unique in that they are associated with only one planet. So here, only one planet is responsible for giving that yoga. And most yogas in astrology involve a combination of different planets in specific positions relative to each other or the Lagna. Now, even if these planets may not have a friendly relationship, they act as temporary allies coming together for a specific purpose. Similar to how uh, nations collaborate in the United Nations to achieve common goals like addressing climate change or promoting world peace. So this is like a group of planets coming together for a specific goal. Whereas in Panchamahapurush Yogas, they operate differently. Each yoga is linked to a single planet and that planet's dominant influence shapes the individual's nature infusing their entire being with its raw energy. This is a bit of an exception to the 
typical concept of yogas in astrology. So let's delve into the Panchamahapurush yogas and before we proceed, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe below. I greatly appreciate any likes or comments you may leave. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Please feel free to let me know. And let's begin with Ruchaka Yoga. This yoga is formed when the planet Mars is either in its exalted state or placed in its own house and is positioned in one of the Kendra houses from the Lagna. While most astrological texts describe Ruchaka Yoga as something that bestows strength and aggression upon the individual, endowing them with vigor and vitality, there's more to it than just physical prowess. Those with Ruchaka Yoga are exceptionally courageous. They are resilient when it comes to confronting uh, difficult challenges and difficult situations in life. They are not easily daunted by adversity. They are not scared of difficult situations. And the first noticeable effect of this yoga is the boost it provides to an individual's confidence. These people are very, very confident people. They are super confident. And when they are faced with a difficult task, they, these individuals approach it with a fearless attitude, assuring everybody else around them that, you know, it can be accomplished. Calm ho jayega, don't worry. This is the kind of assurance that they will give everybody else. And since Mars is the planet associated with this yoga, it brings strategic thinking to the forefront. People with Richoka Yoga tend to plan and strategize before taking action rather than rushing headlong into situations. They combine their hard work with a clear vision, patience and the ability to strike when the timing is right. So they know when to press and when to get the job done. But there are potential downsides to the yoga. So what happens is this may predispose individuals to injuries or accidents and particularly those involving weapons, fire or sharp objects. And if you look at some of the astrological texts, it will tell you that someone with Ruchaka Yoga could become a leader or commander of an army because Mars is often seen as the commander-in-chief. So, even if you are not in the armed forces, many of you who have Ruchaka Yoga, the thought of joining the forces would have crossed your mind. So, even if you are not in the armed forces, you may naturally find yourself leading a team of people in whatever profession you are in and gradually advancing to higher position of leadership. Now, individuals with Ruchaka Yoga often have a deep-seated interest in sacred hymns from the Vedas uh, and may be well-versed in mantras. They are also drawn to adventurous pursuits such as trekking, hiking, canoeing and water sports. Travel and exploration with others are activities that appeal to them. They also tend to be fitness enthusiasts, prioritizing their physical well-being. Competitive activities including sports and rivalry uh, kind of pique their curiosity. So whether it is indoor or outdoor, they like sports. And interestingly, one ancient text even suggests that a person born with Rujaka Yoga can expect to live for at least 70 years, which is noteworthy in an era of decreasing lifespans due to environmental pollution and food adulteration. So it's important to note that this yoga promises a minimum of 70 years, but doesn't mean one's life is over at 70. So some individuals with this yoga may even live to be 100 years or more. Now, let's discuss the next one, which is the Malavya Yoga. This yoga is given by Venus. 
and this yoga is formed when the planet venus is either in its exalted state or positioned in its own zodiac sign or located in one of the kendra houses from the lagna in an astrological chart now individuals with malavya yoga are said to possess an elegant and graceful appearance they are often blessed with a harmonious family life including a loving spouse and children this yoga is associated with wealth and material comforts those who have malavya yoga are often drawn to artistic pursuits such as art music dance and uh singing even fashion they tend to be charismatic and charming they tend to catch the attention of others with their exquisite taste in fashion and a fondness for luxurious items and people with malavya yoga often attract a significant following particularly from those of the opposite sex now it's worth noting that some ancient texts suggest a potential inclination towards extra marital affairs for individuals with malavya yoga however this should be taken with caution and considered in the context of other planetary combinations in the individual's chart but the yoga is closely associated with aspects like savings so well, these people tend to get save a lot of money they also tend to be inclined towards jewelry Venus is also about interpersonal relationships because it is the ruler of the 7th house in the natural zodiac order and those with malavya yoga tend to excel in these areas and it's considered a highly auspicious yoga to have because malavya yoga is associated with the blessings of goddess lakshmi the deity of wealth and prosperity and people with this yoga may also enjoy a long life often reaching the age of 70 years or more now as i've mentioned earlier in the video when a person has multiple pancha mahapurush yogas things can become more complex things get tangled up each yoga giving planet now wants to take the spotlight and exert its influence so when several planets compete for prominence the results obviously will be mixed or even less favorable you may not feel the full effect of that yoga so in a sense the presence of fewer yogas tends to be more fortunate because it allows one planet to dominate the individual's chart otherwise what you get is like a jack of all trades master of none kind of persona so competition among the yogas can dilute their positive effects so ideally having just one of these yogas is the most favorable one yoga is always best having two is also acceptable but having three or more can complicate matters and that is the reason why people who have many yogas don't see very impressive results and i'll also discuss what other factors need to be considered when pr- predicting whether these yogas will work in an individual's favor or not but before that let's look at shasha yoga and this yoga takes shape when the planet saturn who is the disciplinarian of the zodiac is either in its exalted state or positioned in its own zodiac sign and is situated in one of the kendra houses in an astrological chart now according to many texts in astrology individuals with shasha yoga are often described as having a somewhat stern or even cruel disposition they tend to exhibit leadership qualities uh, they accumulate considerable wealth and display courage in their actions they are also known for their competence and keen awareness often pointing out faults in others so when people tend to point faults with others what happens is these individuals can be very easily misunderstood 
because they are not known for their easy going or gentle approach so they lead by showing you the reality they are tough as nails so if you're in a cradle of filth they're not going to lift you up by giving their hand they're going to tell you that you are in this position because of your own actions and they're going to tell you that you need to take corrective action and be more disciplined and that is how you're going to rise from the ashes and one figure that comes to mind when discussing this yoga is lee kuan yew he is the founding father of singapore he was known for imposing strict rules and corporal punishments to maintain discipline in in his country while not everyone with chash yoga will be as extreme as lee kuan yew you can often find shades of these qualities in individuals with this yoga and the text suggests that people with chash yoga often have a tendency to find faults with other people so this characteristic is quite common in professions like law politics they're also quite common in medicine because doctors find faults in the human body otherwise they're not going to dis- diagnose what disease is ailing the person consulting consultancy services are also fault finding in a way audit firms so wherever the ability to pinpoint errors or faults is considered valuable you can see that shashi yoga is present uh, in those charts where a person is excelling in finding faults and those faults are considered valuable that person might have shashi yoga and interestingly the text also mentions that those with chashi yoga may have a wandering nature and find themselves in unusual places like jungles islands or caves now this may be a metaphor for having a penchant for venturing into unfamiliar territory and instigating change so usually people with chashi yoga are unafraid to explore strange lands and bring about transformation moving on to the next challenge once their mission is accomplished now in modern times this could also be associated with professions like archaeology or the lifestyle of digital nomads who travel to different locations and initiate change alternatively it might signify that these individuals are leaders of a free spirited or unconventional nature and people with sashi yoga tend to attract a significant following of eager followers who are willing to take orders from them just like the example that i mentioned so additionally individuals with this yoga are often expected to live a minimum of 70 years now it's important to remember that these descriptions are general tendencies associated with the yoga and not every individual with sash yoga will exhibit all of these qualities to the same extent for that you need to check the chart in detail so let's explore another yoga which is one of the panch mahapurush yoga and this yoga is the rarest among the panch mahapurush yogas this yoga takes shape when the planet mercury associated with communication and intellect is either in its exalted state or positioned in its own zodiac sign and is located in one of the kendra houses in an astrological chart and as the name bhadra suggests this yoga acts as a shield offering protection to individuals who have it and mitigating the challenges and struggles of life so it kind of gives them an insulation and much of the difficulties that these individuals may encounter are often taken care of by people in their surroundings their support network would be from their parents their spouse their children 
in-laws, it could be even their business partners or co-workers. And what I've seen is that many people with Badra Yoga tend to be suffering from some or the other chronic illness. And it becomes imperative or the, should I say, the responsibility devolves now on the family to take care of this person and I hope that is not the case with you but this almost always happens with many people who have Badra Yoga so in a sense there's usually someone looking out for them and safeguarding them from challenging situations and these people often are described as having a sattvic or virtuous nature they also tend to be very knowledgeable, well informed. They may have a particular interest in fields such as mathematics. Uh, also, they may be very good in communication or even Vedic scriptures. And this yoga blesses the native with a harmonious family life, good partner, children and physical comforts. And one remarkable aspect of Badra Yoga is that it's associated with a long and fulfilling life. So those with this yoga can expect to live uh, live up to the ripe age of 80 years as a minimum. That's a noteworthy lifespan. And it's a testament also to the protective and supportive qualities of this yoga. Now, let's explore Hamsa Yoga. This yoga is formed when the planet Jupiter often associated with wisdom, knowledge and spirituality is either in its exalted state or positioned in its own zodiac sign and is located in one of the Kendra houses in an astrological chart. Now the term Hamsa refers to a swan and in a Hindu mythology the swan is considered the vehicle of Brahma and Saraswati who is the deity of knowledge, music, art, speech, wisdom and learning. So individuals with Hamsa Yoga are believed to possess a significant degree of wisdom and a deep-seated love for learning. They may have a particular interest in Vedic scriptures, philosophy or other fields related to knowledge and wisdom. They may also be ex excelling in academics. And this yoga often gives a virtuous and very pure nature. And considering this swan's connection with water, people with Hamsa Yoga often have a fondness for water-related activities. This could include enjoying water sports like swimming, scuba diving, surfing. And Hamsa Yoga often blesses the native with a beautiful spouse and a wide array of comforts and luxuries and the crowning achievement of this yoga is the potential for a long and fulfilling life with those possessing it often living up to the remarkable age of a hundred years so to wrap things up the Panch Mahapurush Yogas highlight the dominant influence of one particular planet among the five planets from Mars to Saturn. Mars signifies strength and aggression. Mercury signifies learning and intelligence. Jupiter signifies oratory and wisdom. Venus signifies grace and pleasure. And Saturn indicates mass appeal. Now it's important to note that for these yogas to have their full effect, the sun and moon in an individual's chart should also be strong. So if not, they may have uh, ordinary results during their dasha or planetary period. However, regardless of the specific case, these yogas are likely to leave their mark on the individual's life to a very great extent. And that's all for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe below. Please leave a like or a comment and share the video among your peers. And I will see you again 
with another new video very soon.